Can I get your perspective, sir? The markets are primed for a Tory victory. I know it could be a hung parliament, but at the moment they're going for a Tory victory. Bob, I want to get a sense from you. Are, when you look at currency markets in the UK, are we priced to perfection on this assumed Tory victory? So I think the key, listen, it seems like many, many years ago when, when I voted Remain, uh, but I think the issue is very different today. We need, as you said, we need a clear majority. Uh, we need to move toward um, a, um, a, a clean uh, and thoughtful uh, Brexit. Uh, that's what the markets need. I think the markets need certainty. It's good for the markets, but even more than that, it's good for the private sector in the UK. Um, so I think the key issue in the election is not just a majority, uh, but does Prime Minister um, uh, Johnson get a workable majority so that then we can work toward early in January or by the latest, the end of January, uh, agreement on Brexit. And then keep in mind, we have a full year then uh, to implement the new trading arrangements with Europe. So there's a lot ahead of us. But I think a workable majority in the election on Friday gives a jolt of confidence to the financial markets, to the currency markets, but most importantly to the private sector in the UK. Bob, great to speak to you today. Um, the UK election this week is one of the potential catalysts that could give fuel to risk assets after this week. Of course, the others being central bank meetings and the December 15th tariff deadline uh, in the trade war between the US and China. It's been a good year for both equity and bond markets in 2019. Are we primed for another good year in terms of returns for 2020? I can tell you that having been here for a day and a half in, in Abu Dhabi, the consensus is, I would say, more positive on financial markets as we end 2019 and go into 2020 than I anticipated. Um, I think the impacts of monetary policy, uh, I think there's a lot of confidence in things that we've seen in the U.S. economy, such as the jobs numbers last week. Uh, and I must say that the private sector in the U.S still has a lot of confidence and is performing well. So I would say overall the consensus here in Abu Dhabi is slightly more positive uh, than I would have expected when, when I came. Uh, Bob, it, it, it's all about where to allocate capital. I just want to circle back to the UK. Mark Carney, a couple of weeks ago when he was with Francine, identified the loss of capital in the UK as a result of the referendum. I just want to get a sense from you. If there is resolution, uh, and as you say, if there is, let's say, a Tory majority and a clean Brexit at the end of January. Bob, do you see a significant return of investment to the UK in 2020? Or is it delayed until after a trade negotiation is, is, is a done deal? I think it will, if there's a workable majority, um, you know, Friday in the election, I think we'll start to discount some progress in January on the Brexit agreement since so much has already been accomplished. Um, so I think it will begin uh, and I think the confidence will really be in the private sector. And I think many of us look at London and London has weathered Brexit you know, fairly well. Real estate prices have stayed reasonably robust, for example. The real issue is the private sector in York, in Newcastle, if you get outside of, of, uh, of London. How are the private, how is the private sector doing and how are businesses doing? And I think we will see a bounce back in confidence even before the final agreement on Brexit. Uh, Bob, we're digesting uh, yet more data out of China today, uh, this time the CPI data. And of course, we're looking ahead to the big meeting this month of policymakers where they'll uh, set their growth target uh, going forward. Um, I know that you recently launched a high yield distressed credit fund and you have investments that span different parts of the globe. Are you looking to make significant investments in China in the debt, perhaps the distressed debt space? You know, it's not, in our, uh, it's not in our playbook at Atlas Merchant Capital. We would, uh, we would like to find a domestic partner potentially down the road and to do something there. Uh, but I will tell you, being here in the Middle East, they're very, very, very positive on investing in China. It's one of the key themes here of Mubadala and Adia 
uh, and some of the sovereign wealth funds here in Abu Dhabi. Um, they're very uh, they're very focused on China. Certainly. The U.S. is still the majority of their external investments. I think it's 50 or 60 percent of the external investments of Mubadala are in the U.S. But they're increasingly focused uh, on China, and within China, they're particularly focused on the tech sector. And, and that was very apparent when we were at the New Economy Forum just a couple of weeks ago with Khaldun Al Mubarak and Dr. Sultan from Adnok. Bob, can I ask you for your take on, on one of the big flashing signs in the credit markets? We saw CLOs really have a shakedown just over six weeks ago. Morgan Stanley have a note. I want to get your sense of, of just how yeah. risky. The, these markets are at the moment. They said leverage loans default are going to double. You're going to see a very tough environment into 2020. Do you think we're at the beginning of a repricing of CLOs that we should pay more attention to? Uh, I am far from an expert on CLOs, um, but as was mentioned, we've just launched a, um, um, a new uh, credit fund which is focused on distressed opportunities. Uh, why are we doing that? We think over the next one to two years, um, there is a real risk of a crack in credit. Um, we think that's really, you know, underpinning that has been 10 years, 11 years of a real proliferation of um, credit, given the lower interest rates, quantitative easing, all the things that we've seen uh, since the financial crisis. We have noted as well the weakness at the low end of the distressed market. Um, what will trigger that? Um, we've seen some early signs, some early warning signs, but we don't know exactly when this will when this will happen or what the trigger is. Could it be trade wars? Could it be um, uh, some event like that? Uh, we do believe over the next year or two, we're going to see a terrific opportunity to invest in distressed based on a mm. crack uh, at the low end of the corporate credit market.